Jack and Kate have been together since their college days, sharing a warm embrace. It's JFK Airport, and Jack is on the verge of embarking on a 12-month internship at Barclays in London. Kate expresses her fears that this journey might spell the end of their relationship. Jack, however, reassures her, emphasizing their well-thought-out plan. She's heading to the best law school while he secures the internship. Despite Kate's desire to prioritize their love over plans, Jack kisses her, confident that their love can withstand the distance. And so, he boards the plane. Fast forward 13 years, Jack wakes up in a luxurious apartment after spending the night with Paula. Eager to see her again, he discovers she's visiting her parents on Christmas Eve. Undeterred, Jack prepares for work, encountering his neighbor, Mrs. Peterson, in the elevator. Briefly advising the doorman, Tony, on investments, Jack speeds off in his Ferrari. Now the president of a Fortune 500 company, Jack leads a meeting with directors discussing options trading and the approach towards institutional customers. Spotting Alan's distraction, Jack invites his thoughts. Alan confesses his preoccupation with family and the promise to be home for Christmas Eve dinner. Jack acknowledges the tunnel vision, but emphasizes the imminent announcement of the largest U.S. corporate merger in two days. Despite Alan's apologies, Jack redirects the focus, wanting everyone excited, not sorry, as their Christmas gift this year will be a 10-figure check. At 8.30, the meeting wraps up, and Jack is informed that Kate has tried to get in touch. He shares with his assistant that Kate was his college girlfriend, nearly his wife 13 years ago. His assistant, surprised by Jack's past intentions, picks up the phone to call Kate. Jack intervenes, expressing his reluctance to reconnect with Kate accidentally. Suddenly, Chairman Peter enters Jack's office, and Jack seeks advice on handling calls from old flames. Peter humorously advises treating them like taxes cut them loose. An hour later, Jack bids the company security man, Frank, a good night. Walking home, he stops at a store for some eggnog. Inside, a man brandishes a winning ticket of 238, but the cashier refuses to cash it, suspecting it's fake. The situation escalates when the man pulls out a gun, prompting Jack to propose a business deal. Jack suggests buying the ticket for $200, allowing the man to cash it elsewhere for 238s, making a quick $38. The man agrees, and they exit the store. Outside, Jack advises against using guns, mentioning programs that could help people like him. The mysterious man cryptically acknowledges that this time, he brought it on himself before leaving. Back home, Jack goes straight to bed. The next morning, something feels amiss as he wakes up. To his surprise, he finds a woman hugging him, none other than Kate. Suddenly, two children burst into the room, bouncing on the bed. Jack appears bewildered, and the little girl addresses him as Dad. Jack hastily gets out of bed, throws on some clothes, and rushes downstairs. In the foyer, he encounters Kate's parents. Unable to locate his Ferrari, he inquires about its whereabouts. Surprisingly, Kate's parents claim to be unaware of any Ferrari and lend him their Cadillac. Jack speeds off to New York City, relieved to find Tony outside his apartment building. However, Tony denies him entry, citing non-resident status, leaving Jack perplexed and frustrated. Mrs. Peterson joins the scene, and Jack complains about Tony's odd behavior. Confused by his identity, Mrs. Peterson and Tony threaten to involve the police. Worried, Jack retreats to the car and heads to his office. Upon arrival, Frank prevents him from entering, asserting that he cannot access the premises. Angrily, Jack declares his role as the company president and points to a board listing names, only to find Alan's name in his place. Strolling back onto the street, he spots the mysterious man driving his Ferrari, further fueling Jack's frustration. The man instructs Jack to join him in the car, handing him a bag to inhale claiming it's an experience that has made people vomit before. Perplexed, Jack demands an explanation. The man cryptically reveals that this is a glimpse of the life that could have been, and Jack won't regain his real life until he figures things out. With no further details, the man hands Jack a bell, lures him out of the car, and speeds away. Jack, utterly baffled, decides to drive back and have a conversation with Kate. In the neighborhood, Jack struggles to locate Kate's house and seeks directions from a passerby. The man excitedly calls his wife, proclaiming he found Jack. Inside the man's home, Jack realizes the man is his friend Arnie as he observes pictures of them together. In conversation, Jack discovers that Kate is his wife. Walking back to Jack's supposed home, Arnie praises Jack's luck and success 
highlighting his lovely wife and spacious four-bedroom house. Upon entering, Jack meets Kate, who embraces him but quickly turns angry, questioning his disappearance. Jack explains his trip to New York City, where he claims to actually live, insisting he has no family. Unconvinced, Kate expresses frustration with his peculiar excuses. In a desperate attempt, Jack starts ringing the bell given by the mysterious man, hoping for a solution. Instead, his daughter Annie takes the bell, and Kate scolds him for missing their children opening Christmas presents. Expressing remorse, Jack learns from Kate that he should prepare for the Thompson party he's supposedly been eagerly anticipating. Disheartened by the sight of budget clothing in the wardrobe, Jack complies. At the party, they are greeted by Evelyn Thompson, and Jack reconnects with apparent friends. Evelyn, however, approaches him flirtatiously. Returning home, Kate assigns him the task of walking their dog, a duty he reluctantly agrees to undertake. The next morning, Jack is stirred awake by the sound of a crying baby. Knocking on the bathroom door to seek guidance from Kate, he receives no response and eventually opens the door. Kate informs him that it's his turn to get the children ready for school and daycare. Jack, clearly unfamiliar with diaper changing, fumbles through the process, prompting assistance from Annie. During the interaction, Annie questions if Jack is her real dad, and he admits she's correct. She inquires about her real dad's whereabouts, to which Jack confesses ignorance, but assures her he'll return soon. Annie playfully examines his face, speculating that aliens did a good job making him look like her dad. After making chocolate milk together, she whimsically welcomes him to Earth. Later, Annie guides Jack on dropping off her brother Josh at daycare, and Jack then takes her to school. Curious about his job, Jack learns from Annie that he sells tires at Big Ed's. Arriving at the shop owned by his father-in-law, Ed, Jack asks an employee for directions to his office. In his office, he notices photos on the wall, realizing that the Jack whose life he's living never went to London. That night, Jack watches the TV, shocked as the news announces the largest merger in U.S. corporate history. Frustrated, he shouts at the TV, claiming it's his deal and he's the real architect. Suddenly, Kate cheerfully enters, turning off the TV, mentioning the kids are asleep, and joyfully jumping into bed to kiss Jack. Jack interrupts her, expressing admiration for her beauty. She appreciates the compliment and goes to change into something nice. However, when she returns, Jack pretends to have fallen asleep. The next day, while shopping, Jack decides to try on a suit that Kate compliments him on. However, when she spots the $2,400 price tag, she deems him crazy. Despite the heated argument that ensues, Jack insists on buying the suit, but eventually gives in and decides against it. Apologizing on the way home, Jack and Kate talk, and Jack reflects on the key events of their shared life. An unexpected baby, saving Ed from a heart attack, working for Ed, and moving into their house. The following day, Jack's bowling skills disappoint his friends, and upon returning home, he discovers Kate has indulged in one of his saved chocolate cakes. A playful chase ensues, culminating in a kiss on the staircase. Jack's attempt at a romantic gesture falls short and Kate leaves. That night, Jack watches an old tape of a birthday party for Kate. Witnessing himself singing a surprise song with his friends, he reminisces about the joy it brought her. The next morning, Jack tends to Josh's baby bottle, and Kate surprises him with an anniversary gift. Excitedly opening it, Jack discovers a suit she bought for him. However, when Kate eagerly awaits her gift, it becomes clear that Jack has forgotten their anniversary. Saddened, she expresses her disappointment, and Jack promises to make amends. While preparing chocolate milk for Annie, she points out that her dad always gets something special for her mom on their anniversary. Inspired, Jack asks if he ever took Kate to the city, and Annie thinks it's a great idea. The scene shifts to Jack and Kate in New York, indulging in fine dining at a fancy restaurant. Jack invites her to dance, despite the setting not being the typical dance floor. Ignoring convention, Jack and Kate dance, drawing admiration from onlookers. Later, Jack opens up to Kate about feeling like he's living someone else's life. He recounts his past confidence, strolling with the Wall Street Journal in hand, feeling like he had everything figured out. Now he feels adrift, and Kate empathizes, admitting to a similar uncertainty. Jack reassures her, expressing certainty that there's no place he'd rather be than with her. That night, they check into a luxurious hotel, and Jack passionately declares his enduring love for her. In the following days, Jack appears to find joy in the company of Annie and Josh, 
Kate kisses him affectionately goodbye as he heads to work, and Jack seems to embrace his role in selling tires. One day, Peter visits the shop with a flat tire, sparking a conversation with Jack. Jack elaborates on his detailed thoughts about how the big merger could have been valued at $130 billion instead of $122 billion, potentially yielding more profit. Impressed, Peter hands Jack the delivery address and insists that Jack personally deliver the car. The next morning, Jack arrives at the company in the fancy car dressed in a suit. He meets Peter and Alan in his old office, engaging in conversation. Jack, acknowledging the vast difference in scale between his $2 million revenue tire business and their multi-billion dollar Fortune 500 company, emphasizes the universal nature of people. He demonstrates his knowledge of human behavior by listing personal details about Peter and Allen, impressing Peter with his insights. Convinced of Jack's competence, Peter instructs Allen to show Jack around. Once alone, Alan attempts to assert control, making veiled threats and warning Jack not to interfere. Amused, Jack laughs off Alan's changed demeanor, expressing approval for his newfound assertiveness before walking away, leaving Alan bewildered. Later, Jack surprises Kate with a visit to a luxurious apartment, explaining it's a perk of an executive position he's been offered. While she appreciates the gesture, Kate highlights the importance of their current suburban life for the sake of their children. Jack proposes a move to the city, envisioning the life they've always wanted. However, Kate points out the practical challenges, such as her needing a new job and the children leaving their friends. Jack suggests commuting, but Kate emphasizes the toll it would take on family time. Back home, Jack discovers his old flight ticket to London. Kate shares her surprise and relief that he returned the very next day after boarding that plane. Expressing her love, she declares her willingness to move the entire family to New York City if necessary, prioritizing their love over their address. As she leaves, Jack contemplates the weight of her words. The next day, Kate wakes up to the heartwarming sight of Jack playing with Annie in the snow. Annie expresses her certainty that her dad would come back and hugs him tightly. In the evening, Jack visits a nearby store and is surprised to find the mysterious man working as the cashier. Despite Jack's anger and resistance, the man calmly notes that a glimpse is inherently temporary. After paying, Jack mentions his kids and declares his intention to go home. Upon returning home, he checks on Josh and then on Annie, who briefly wakes up asking if it's morning. Jack reassures her it's not and encourages her to go back to sleep, playfully whispering about going back to the mothership. In the bedroom, he talks to Kate, urging her to promise she'll remember him as he is right now. Kate assures him and suggests he go to bed, but Jack insists on one more thing. He takes their dog for a walk, allowing the dog to run freely for a while. Back home, Jack tries to savor every moment, but eventually succumbs to sleep. Jack wakes up in his old apartment, donning casual clothes. As he prepares to leave, Paula greets him at the door, wishing him a Merry Christmas. Jack, disoriented, insists it can't be Christmas and leaves without engaging further. Driving to the house he glimpsed, he knocks on the door, only to find an unfamiliar man answering that Kate doesn't live there. On his way back, his assistant calls, notifying him that he's 30 minutes late for a meeting. Jack reassures her he'll be there in 20 minutes, grappling with the lingering sense of the extraordinary life he briefly experienced. In his office, Alan questions Jack's well-being as he notices Jack without a suit. However, Jack, seemingly devoid of the previous joy in his life, responds with a determination to address a crisis threatening the merger deal. Recognizing this as his real life, Jack decides to intervene. In his limousine, he contacts someone to obtain Kate's real address. Arriving at the address, Jack finds people moving out and encounters Kate, who explains her move to Paris for her law firm. Jack inquires about her marital status, and she confirms she's not married. She hands him a box with his old belongings, revealing that this was the reason for reaching out to him. Kate's assistant mentions a booked flight for her at 7 o'clock, prompting Jack's realization. Despite Kate becoming preoccupied with other matters, Jack departs, instructing his chauffeur to take him home instead of to the business meeting. Sorting through his old belongings, Jack stumbles upon photos of himself and Kate, sparking a sense of recognition. Glancing at his watch, Jack rushes to the airport. Upon arrival, he searches for Kate and upon finding her, passionately calls her name. Jack desperately explains their life in Jersey, their two wonderful kids, and the deep love they share. 
He acknowledges that it might have felt like a dream, but nothing has felt more real. Fearing that it will disappear forever if she boards the plane, he pleads with Kate not to leave for Paris, at least not that night. He proposes a conversation over coffee, and Kate accepts. In the final scene, Jack and Kate are shown talking and enjoying each other's company at the airport cafe, hinting at the possibility of rekindling their connection. 